Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator and in today's video tutorial we will be creating a Halloween lantern using Lightburn software and a laser cutting machine. You can download the necessary files to get started from my website along with ready-made files for assembling this lantern. To begin, let's open the files for creating the lantern's sides. Currently they don't have any interesting shape or design, but we will change that by adding graphics that we can download from the internet. Images can be found on the internet in two ways, as pictures such as JPEGs or GIF images, or as fonts. Fonts are essentially typefaces, but some fonts consist of images which can be quite fun to use. However, there are differences in how you work with them, as we will see later on in this video. For an image like a skull for our Halloween lantern, we need to convert it into a vector image. And we do this by tracing the image. Lightburn software has a special feature for this, which you can find by right clicking on the image and selecting Trace Image. Then use the threshold slider to ensure that the entire image is enclosed so that there are no gaps. And you will need to pay close attention to detail, but it's not difficult because you can zoom in on the image. Once the image has been successfully converted into a vector file, you can then resize it to fit within the outline of the lantern's sides. Then ungroup the image and select the outer line with the mouse and use the offset tool to create an outer border. Now when you subtract the outer border of the skull from the lanterns outside, you will have a frame for your engraving. As you can see, this method ensures that the wood is left intact for engraving the image, while other areas are cut out. Repeat this process for the other image, which is not really an image, but a letter, as we will be using a font with fun images. For example, when I press the letter A, I get a nice skull. And you can resize and position this skull in one of the lantern's sides. However, you will be noticing that it's not possible to ungroup the image, because actually it's no image, it's a letter. And there are no groups. To solve this, you will need to use an other method to convert a letter into a vector image, which involves converting the image to a pot, which is essentially the same as tracing an image. Now follow the same steps as before to ensure the image can be engraved on the wood by providing enough material around the engraving. I won't repeat these steps as it would be redundant and the video is already quite lengthy. Next, let's create some holes in the wood so that we can see the candle inside the lantern. We'll use the pen tool for this. Now, you don't need to draw everything perfectly at once because after drawing you can adjust the holes precisely using the sliders and handle to fit within the image. Now that we have completed the lantern's sides, let's print out or cut out the top and the bottom. Then let's focus on setting up the engraving settings for the lasers we will be using. The settings will yeah, of course vary depending on the specific laser cutting machine that you have, but in my case I have a 24 watt machine and I will be providing you the settings for that particular machine. You can then approximate the settings for your machine or of course even better conduct some tests. For the layer that fills the engraving I will be using the offset fill method. This fill starts from the center and works its way out towards the outside of the image, generating more heat where the engraving is made. And this results in a deeper engraving with less power output, giving you a beautiful image within your engraving. I use a laser speed of 54,000 millimeters per minute at the power level of only 15%. As you can see, this is a very low power at a very high speed, but it's possible due to the offset fill method. When cutting through the wood, I don't want to do it all in one pass. Multiple passes makes cuts look nicer, and I choose to cut at 800 mm per minute at a power level of 70%. With this combination of speed and power, I will need to make three passes over the same pot, but the cut is very beautiful and yields a very nice result. Now that all the pieces are ready, I can assemble them and hold them together with a small amount of glue. 
I hope your lantern turns out just as beautiful. And I want to thank you for watching this long video tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, well, please give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And this way the YouTube algorithm will know that I create great videos and it will recommend them to more people, especially important for longer videos like this one. And then, well, thanks for watching and I will be seeing you next time. Bye!